Scythe has a new FUMA 3 CPU tower cooler that we got to see just ahead of Computex 2023 in Taipei, Taiwan. And it's a big overhaul to the existing and popular Scythe FUMA 2 CPU cooler. New white and black versions are also on the way, as are a ton of new fans. But while visiting Scythe, our report morphed into more than just coverage of all the new products, which we'll get to, but also a meeting of the engineering and design talent that is this man, Mr. Kitagawa-san. Kitagawa-san is one of Scythe's founders and principal engineers, and we spent a lot of time talking with Kitagawa-san about Scythe's design and engineering philosophies and some of the story of Scythe, plus his reasoning for product revisions in an increasingly competitive cooler market with the likes of Thermal Wright's Peerless Assassin and Deepcool's AK series of coolers. The conversation was educational, but sometimes confusing as we work through multiple layers of translation to go from Japanese to Chinese to English. <laughs> and after that happened a few times, we realized that uh, a Japanese man and an American man in Taiwan can both speak Chinese. So. We started doing more of that. <laughs> Kirikawa-san is an interesting and funny character. Despite being a successful founder of a now self-sufficient company, he's still deeply involved in product development. He brought the industry, the famous and sought after gentle typhoon fans a long time ago. And he has a lot of opinions on proper cooler and fan design, and in particular is focused on eliminating noise. Now we plan to come back to him and do a full industry profile on him and talk about some of the backstory and history in a future piece. But for today, we're gonna to focus on some of the new products like the FUMA 3 following up the wildly successful FUMA 2. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and the CryoSheet Graphene Pads. These CryoSheets are molecularly stacked in the Z-axis to encourage vertical direct thermal transfer from the IHS to the cooler. CryoSheet pads are made to be easily applicable for a thermal interface and completely avoid paste dryout because it's not paste. It makes them particularly useful for long service life systems with minimal maintenance. They come in multiple sizes for suitability on the most common laptops and desktop CPUs, and you can learn more at the Thermal Grizzly Cryo Sheets at the link in the description below. Let's get into the new products. So Scythe has a number of new things coming up. They have a lot of new fans. They have the FUMA 3. There was a prototype that's not even through tooling all the way yet for the Mugen 6, and a couple of other things. And uh, also, Scythe is finally moving to focus on some of the aesthetics as well, in addition to what is traditionally just function focused for them by adding what they're calling snow white coolers. You can guess what color those are. And they also have a more blackout design cooler to accompany the typical sort of gray and metal look that Scythe goes with. Now, the quickest version of the lineup here before we get into the more specific product details is this. Scythe's new FUMA 3 dual tower, dual fan air cooler is arriving first in the standard gray and black colorway, followed up later in the year by pure white and black color options and those will have uh, some other revisions as well. The FUMA 3 improves on compatibility while also increasing service area drastically. And the Snow White FUMA 3 and the Blackout FUMA 3 are obviously a new direction for the company. Other than these new FUMA variants, Scythe already has plans to introduce a revision B of its FUMA 3 with an alternative fan set and some other changes, but that'll come later. And it had a prototype that we'll come back to with an early tooling Mugen 6 cooler that it broke out for us alongside its Kotetsu revision. Scythe is making some big changes to the Kotetsu 3, but mostly that's gonna be focused on changing the mounting kit because it ended up preferring a metal backplate to a plastic one. The Scythe additionally introduced its new line of fans, although Scythe is not reviving the Gentle Typhoon to uh, the sadness of many, it did engineer its replacement with more modern approaches in mind. Scythe showed us the Grand Tornado, the Wonder Tornado, the Kaze Flex 2, and the Wonder Snail. Yes, yes, that is the name. It's the, it's the Wonder Snail. We asked why. I thought it was gonna be because it's slow or something, but it's because it kind of looks like a snail shell. It is a fairly fast RPM fan though. So they've got some work to do on the naming. Uh, we did talk to them about the naming, and Scythe 
kind of saw our point about at least that one. I, I will say, though, whenever you're listening to conversations in a language you only partly understand, and then you randomly hear the English words wonder snail in the middle of a bunch of words you don't know, it's kind of hard not to laugh. So let's go over the rest of the FUMA 3 here. The FUMA 3 pricing will be $50. That puts it about $20 cheaper than the prior FUMA 2 models. So they are coming down in price, and this is something that Scythe was really focusing on. The FUMA is always in plus or minus about 10 bucks, but targeting 50 for the new one makes it ultra competitive with a market that has ballooned with options like the Thermal Right Peerless Assassin and the Deep Cool AK series as mentioned previously. Uh, the FUMA 3 should also begin shipping in mid-July and they have additional variants available later in the year. The FUMA 3 retains the core design elements of the FUMA 2. It mostly mixes in a larger 25 millimeter thick central and a smaller 15 millimeter thick front fan and it sticks to a two tower format but they shallowed the angle of the heat pipes to be more vertically straight and allow for better motherboard compatibility. This is especially true for the ITX platforms with IO covers and VRM heat sinks that run closer to the CPU socket. And Scythe showed us their most challenging and problematic ITX motherboard now accommodates the FUMA 3. The actual vertical clearance is actually one millimeter shorter than the FUMA 2 and measuring from the bottom of the raised fin stack at the back to the surface of the board. It's 54 versus 55 millimeters now, but the motherboard compatibility is far better because Scythe got rid of the curvature in the heat pipes. And RAM clearance isn't really a concern on these coolers because the shallower front fans avoid conflict altogether. As for the back half of the fin stack, that is also wider now. The whole thing is taller too, and it's got that cap cover on it, and it adds more surface area. So the fins themselves have been brought in to a higher fin density for increased surface area, but they're the same fin thickness. The fin design is significantly different and departs from the diagonal zigzag design previously, but with higher density and equivalent thickness, the surface area is improved and the cooling will be improved as a result. Scythe was able to do this because its new fans are capable of keeping that high airflow while also improving pressure a little bit. The FUMA 3 also has a larger cold plate, modernizing it for larger Intel 13th gen CPUs. And as for the fans, they've switched to the Kaze Flex 2 120mm fans for both the 15mm and 25mm units. Scythe claims that in like for like testing with a relatively high heat load from a controlled 13900K, they're seeing something like a two degree improvement between the FUMA 2 and the FUMA 3, which is actually a large jump when you're talking air coolers. Getting even one degree is kind of difficult and that's often just error anyway. Some future revisions of the FUMA 3 will include the new Wonder Tornado fan, which is Scythe's second tier fan behind the Grand Tornado. Price is TBD on those versions, and they're expecting Q4 for the white and black FUMA 3 alternatives. One of the things that designer and co-founder Kitagawa-san talked about was the idea of IHS curvature. And this is something we've mentioned in the past, but we've never really explored in depth, where technically you could create a perfect golden sample cooler for a specific CPU or a specific at least set of CPUs with some variability. But when trying to accommodate multiple CPUs like the Ryzen 7000 series, in addition to AM4 and Intel especially, the best objective Scythe thinks is one of balance, trying to be able to support all of these with the best performance mixture across them rather than targeting one uh, or the other, because Scythe isn't really a company, at least at this scale, that can support adding coolers with all these different revisions for all these different CPUs and have it make any sense ultimately. And one of the issues there too becomes a challenge of naming and confusing product stacks where suddenly consumers need to buy the specific cooler for their specific CPU and it would just create problems. So Kitagawa-san mentioned that his design philosophy is to focus on one cooler at a time and get it as good as possible for a balance of CPUs that are relevant on the market rather than trying to hand tune every single CPU cooler for every single CPU, which is a decision we agree with and that makes sense. Scythe, just for perspective, noted that the actual kind of difference in refinements they're making to accommodate the curvature as much as they can is as small as zero point, let me get the zeros right, 0 0.005 millimeters for uh, trying to resolve this problem where Intel CPUs have more of a convex uh, curvature to the IHS than AMD CPUs, which tend to be flatter. 
Another aspect of its coolers that Scythe has improved, including on the Kotetsu, is the mounting system. Some of the newer Scythe coolers are moving to a female thread on the cooler side alongside an improved spring. And the female thread improves the ability to hook the installation without excess or uncomfortable force by the user. And this is something that we've wanted on more coolers. Scythe's new spring eliminates an old issue that seemingly no one but Scythe knew about, which is that the prior springs on some of their coolers could lose two to three kilograms of pressure over time. It's not from repeat use and installation and uninstallation, but rather from sitting installed on a CPU. And this means that long-term installations would slowly lose small amounts of performance. It shouldn't be major, but it was enough for Scythe to rework it all anyway. And the new sprain retains its tension long-term. So fans are up next, and naming critiques aside, just to get everyone up to speed on what they mean, Scythe's idea of the naming is grand means the best, wonder is the second tier, and then there's snails, and then Kaze Flex is a different type of fan entirely that's more focused on airflow, so it doesn't really slot into the stack. So they're going for Grand Tornado and Wonder Tornado for their newer higher-end fans. The Grand Tornado fan is Scythe's reintroduction of a modernized uh, approach for something like the Gentle Typhoon in that they're trying to fill that old uh, cult following market that it had. They're moving to a customized advanced hydraulic bearing and working with STK for the manufacturing on this. We weren't able to get a bearing standalone to show you, but there's some specialized uh, milling in the grooves inside to help improve performance. And the Grand Tornado also hosts a neodymium magnet on the back of the hub, which Scythe says stabilizes the impeller during rotation and helps keep the fan and hub centered. This helps reduce the micro wobble you sometimes get at some points of the fan curve, and the blades are made of LCP or liquid crystal polymer, which is the trendy material that everyone's moving to for high performance fans. LCP famously doesn't expand much under rotational forces, and so it allows manufacturers to design the blade to run closer to the inner rim of the fan chassis, which is really important for performance without expanding and hitting it. As for the rest, the fans will be in 2,000 and 3,000 RPM variants, Pricing is below $20 for the Grand Tornado. It's below $10 for the Wonder Tornado. And the differences between these is the Wonder Tornado will be a step down. It's a 2000 RPM option only, as opposed to two and three for the Grand. And it's got some visually evident differences as well, such as, for example, the hub, which is entirely changed between the two. You can just see that. Uh, and then they're also not using LCP on the Wonder Tornado, but they are on the Grand, and they have a different frame material as well. As for the rest of the cooler, Scythe had that new prototype Mugen 6 cooler, and that is currently a revision for early tooling. They have some, it's really heavy right now because it is that early tooling revision, and every question was answered with more or less TBD. So we'll find out more about that one in the future. It's a single tower, fatter solution, and normally the goal for this one is to compact things down as much as possible while still getting that surface area that you might get from a Fuma 3, except without the dual tower approach and some of the clearance. And we'll have more information on that soon. As for the rest, we spoke with Kitagawa-san about a lot of things, and most of them were engineering topics relating to CPU IHS curvature, getting surface area without creating too much impedance, and we also talked about liquid cooling solutions and what balances have to be struck there to increase surface area uh, without introducing all kinds of new problems. So he gave us some information about the formation of Scythe, his history in the industry, how he got his start in Japan and eventually ended up in Taiwan working on the Scythe products. And uh, we're also hoping to see some designs and drawings in the future. But we'll return at some point in the not too distant future to do a profile and industry background on Mr. Kitagawa-san and talk about uh, how Scythe came to be and some of its core engineering principles. For now, though, that's the products. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to support our on-the-ground reporting like this or patreon.com slash gamersnexus because we self-fund all of our own travel flights and hotels for these types of trips to bring you this coverage. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.